G'day everybody, my name is Sam Marwood, I'm the co-founder of Cultivate Farms and yeah, I wanted to, to spend some time to talk about how uh, some practical steps on how you can get onto your farm as an aspiring farmer, as a wannabe farmer. Uh, I apologise that I couldn't make it uh, there today at the New South Wales Young Farmers event in Wagga. Uh, I only live in an hour away in Albury, uh, but I happen to be up, up north getting some sun, uh, but I wanted to um, get in touch and send this message uh, to hopefully inspire some uh, young farmers out there that uh, if you do want to be a farmer it is absolutely possible uh, and that you don't have to wait till you're 50 to have saved enough money to buy your multi-million dollar farm. You can be matched onto your farm and own a part of that farm with others uh, and live your farming dream. So that's my message today. I want to inspire you. I want to get you thinking a little bit differently about how you can get onto your farm. Don't just sit around hoping that one day you become a farmer or that you might magically have enough money, uh, you can get out there and, and get active and hustle and, and find your farm. So I am going to try and do this without any editing, uh, pretending that I'm there live. So bear with me. I've got some notes here. Um, yeah, I hope you take something away from this. Uh, love to keep uh, discussing how we can inspire many, many people uh, across New South Wales and across Australia to become a farmer and start attracting the best people uh, into farming, uh, which is our absolute dream. Um, so we started to cultivate farms uh, because it pretty much is impossible as a New South Wales young aspiring farmer to own a farm. Unless you're a multi-millionaire uh, or you've inherited the farm, it's pretty, pretty tough to, to own a multi-million dollar farm. 99.9% .9 of Australians can't afford it. Uh, so we think that's a major limiting factor to uh, getting people onto farms. And even the uh, reason why some regional communities are struggling is because young people want to be farmers, they can't, so they go off and do something that actually makes money and they can live on, but it's not actually what they want to do. Um, so we're hopeful that if we can eliminate that biggest barrier to entry, which is capital, we can have a flood of people coming back to the bush and, and living on farms and being farmers uh, because we know farming is some sort of ingrained need or want in many people. Uh, and let's just let that fly, let it, uh, let it come to fruition. Um, so we are really, really positive for the future and um, I guess what we're doing is a matchmaking service. So we match an aspiring farmer with a retiring farmer and investors to own and operate a farm together. And that's pretty much the core and the, the most of the work we do is just matching like-minded people who want to um, get on a farm. Uh, to see if they can come up with a mutually beneficial agreement and it's through conversations. And this idea of matchmaking uh, might seem a bit weird in the farming world, but it was weird 10, 15 years ago when your friend said uh, that they found a, a, their date or their partner online. You thought it was weird, but now it's weird to hear that people go out to the pub to try and find their partner. Uh, matchmaking is, is a common way of hooking people up, and we want that to be the common way of people connecting online uh, for farms in the future is that you don't just have to look to the next door neighbor to buy your farm anymore. The people can come from anywhere in Australia, uh, and we can match the best people together to get on that farm. So we think in five years' time, it's going to be a pretty normal thing to talk about matchmaking. So what we do are three things around uh, providing hope that you can be a farmer. We get people farm ready. And third is we match them onto the farm. So we're finding the biggest step here <coughs> is actually uh, letting people know they can be a farmer. There's so many people out there who know that capital is the biggest barrier. And so they stop their dreams. They stop thinking about it and they stop working towards it because why would you work for a dream that's impossible? And we're saying, no, no, it is possible. And I'm going to work through those steps today. But we're trying to get people and get discussion going that anyone can be a farmer, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're sitting in a skyscraper somewhere right now uh, and wishing you were a farmer, you can become a farmer. It's not going to happen overnight, but you can do it. So we spend a lot of time uh, inspiring hope that you can be a farmer. The second then is around farm ready. So now that you know you want to be a farmer, you're actually going to put the effort in to get farm ready. You'll go and go to a university, do a TAFE course, do an online course. Uh, you will do whatever you can. You work for a farmer, you work at the corporate farm, you'll get your skills up, you'll lease um, so that when a farm opportunity pops up, you are farm ready. So we think this is a great opportunity for education institutes to back what we're doing because it's going to provide more students, really, more people wanting to get on and, and learn how to become a farmer. And then the third is the matchmaking itself. So we're setting up relationships with investors, which takes a while, takes a lot of time, um, and getting them excited that we have the next generation of farmers on our database. If you want the best farmers, come to us. We'll match you with them. Uh, we're also getting uh, a list of retiring farmers built up across the country of people thinking about, well, instead of just selling my farm next to the next door neighbour, I actually know there's a big pool of aspiring farmers who would want to get onto my farm and, and they can find the cash uh, to do whatever it is they want to retire or, or remain an owner on that farm. So 
Uh, they're it, hope, farm ready, and, and matchmaking. Um, but I also want to emphasize, you don't need us to do uh, do this. You can find your own farm, you can find your own retiring farmers, you can find your own investors. There's a lot of different ways of getting investment nowadays, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. But uh, we, our bigger aim is just to get anyone who wants to be a farmer onto the farm. So don't just rely on us, use us to get yourselves pumped up if you want. We're more than happy for you to come to us and we can help, but just want to emphasize that this is about getting regional communities uh, thriving by bringing aspiring farmers back onto the land. So here we go, here's some practical steps. Um, and I just wanna, before I also get there, uh, I wanna talk about how farm ownership is actually possible because a lot of people are going, oh, what as if, how are you actually gonna do this? Uh, how are you gonna get me onto my farm? Um, so we do think that this matchmaking concept is really powerful because there are people who have money who wanna buy farms, but they can't run it. So we are really connecting uh, three parties together, which are the people who wanna own and operate the farm, so aspiring farmers, so they're the ones who want it, uh, who will run it, uh, but don't have all the cash, but have the energy. The people who currently own farms, but are maybe wanting to step back and maybe don't have the energy they used to, but still want to remain connected somehow. And then there are those investors who want to invest into farming, already probably already do invest into farms. Uh, they need the best farms and the best farmers, uh, and we want to be able to bring that to them. So it's a matter of connecting those three people who have three, uh, three separate needs, but uh, can support each other onto these farms. So where can this money come from? We talk about matching to investors. Uh, when you think about investors, people probably cringe a bit and go, oh, investors, I don't, uh, that sounds a bit scary and full on. Uh, but we don't think it actually is. So you probably think about wealthy individuals when you think investors, and that's definitely the case when we're talking to a number of them already. But there are a stack of others as well. Investors for us also uh, means retiring farmer. So we want love the idea that Retiring farmer retains some equity in the farm, uh, so you don't have to raise as much to get onto it. So they, in a way, are seen as an investor, and why not remain or keep your investment into an asset and an investment class that you know everything about, you know you've lived there the whole life, your whole life. There's banks, but uh, getting a, a loan from a bank is difficult because you need 40, at least 40% 40 uh, deposit, and for a multi-million dollar farm, that is uh, a lot of money. But they are good when you do have a top up of other investments. So banks are definitely there on the list. You can be backed by a wealthy farmer. A lot of people work for wealthy farmers uh, and we love the idea of uh, getting those wealthy farmers uh, excited by your plans to get on a new farm and they're always thinking about expanding. So why not get that wealthy farmer to back you onto uh, your own farm? Local community, uh, there are farms we've heard of and we're gonna keep promoting that eight, eight people in a community have invested into a uh, farm and uh, is making really good money. And we love that idea that you're spending a couple of hundred thousand dollars using your self-managed super uh, to invest into your local community and make money. That's really, really cool. Uh, the retired farmers themselves, I've talked about so vendor finance is a great option. Um, so not only could they retain equity, but uh, do a vendor finance pr uh, process, reverse mortgages, I need to unpack more, but that's definitely another option as well. Friends and family, uh, lots of people have friends and family who have a bit of money, you know, even a little bit, and you can get a lot of them together to help back, back you onto your farm. And the final one is crowd, the crowd, equity crowdfunding is gonna be massive uh, in the future of farming. People wanna connect back to the bush, and what better way to connect than to own it, own a bit of dirt that you go back to. So we're really getting stuck in the crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding particularly, and we think that's really exciting and, and another way. So all these combinations are just ways to get money. We're trying to set up relationships in all those areas to make it really easy. So for us, getting onto the farm, uh, we think is absolutely possible, but the biggest barrier is no longer now money, it's mindset. We're finding that the ag industry, retiring farmers, aspiring farmers and investors just need to slightly adjust their mindset and we could really make a big difference in Australia and make a lot of people's farming dreams come true. And I'll just unpack that now. So I think aspiring farmers, you need to get your mindset right that you can own a farm. So, but are you really then hustling? So once you know you are, you can, how much effort are you actually putting in to try and get onto your farm? That's probably the biggest thing we're finding is how much do people want it? Retiring farmers, don't just think about handing your farm over to next door neighbor or don't think you've got to hand it to your kids. The, this mindset change for them is, would you hand it over to some kids that aren't your own? And I think that's perfectly, uh, uh, should be a perfectly normal thing to think about, but it's not commonly uh, done. Investors that you need uh, uh, to get the best people and to get the best people, you need to give them ownership. So you can't just get a farm manager anymore, I think, and you need to be able to give them some equity and for them to build that equity over time, and that way you're gonna open the doors to some very, very clever people who are invested into the opportunity as well. And the ag industry, is, I think, broadly, have to be uh, open to new ideas. We, we have found it tricky to present what we're talking about 
to the broader ag industry. They seem a bit cautious about what we're doing, but really it's just about getting conversations happening. So we just want the ag industry to think a bit more liberally um, because what we're going to do is inspire a lot of people onto farms. All right, so let's get some into some details. There's 10 minutes already. I know I've got to um, get through this, but please check out our YouTube as well. I've got a lot of this on there uh, and Facebook page. So how to get you on your farm. So hope. Make sure, first off, if you're an aspiring farmer, you need to document your plan. Write down what it is you want to do as a farmer, where you want to farm, what sort of farming uh, uh, and farm operation you, you operate. I think having that plan is a massive first step and a lot of people don't do it. You need to know what you're fighting for. Uh, then think about, are you actually hungry? How much do you want this? What are you doing between 5 p.m. and midnight every day to find your farm and make your farming dream a reality? You might have your full-time job, but you've got plenty of spare time. Stop playing computer games. Stop going to the pub. Uh, work hard to make your dream a reality. How much do you actually want it? And I think that's a really, really big one. Talk it out. I find a lot of people don't want to talk about their farming dreams. For some reason, they're ashamed of it, and we think that's, that's terrible. You should be out there being like a farm entrepreneur, telling absolutely everybody you know, uh, that you're going to be a farmer all you need to do is find the farm uh, so we encourage you to talk it out and the more you talk about it, the more uh, your dreams will come into reality and you'll believe it yourself and also meet with re- uh, regularly with like-minded people there's probably lots of people out there who are thinking why would you want to even be a farmer uh, so it's great to hear their feedback but really you need to surround yourself with, with people who also want to be farmers so that you can um, encourage each other and support each other along the journey all right so now you've got your hope the next thing is around farm ready um, we encourage you guys to do a skills audit. Do you actually have the skills to run a farm? Uh, if you don't, uh, start filling in the gaps. So get on there and do courses, online courses, TAFE, go to university, do whatever you have to. Uh, go work on farms as a farm hand or a farm manager. Uh, we encourage you to work on a corporate farm. We think it's an awesome way to build your skills and understand their processes. There's an organization called Ag Draft where you can go work uh, on a casual basis for farmers. Uh, volunteer for a year. This is really cool. Don't go to, maybe don't go to university. Spend a year for free working for the best farmer in Australia or best uh, ag industry expert you know. Get their contacts, get their knowledge, uh, and they might even back you onto your farm later. But we love the idea of volunteering to showing that how much you are passionate about this and want it to happen. And uh, go work on the best farm in Australia. What a great opportunity. Um, and then leasing land is also a good opportunity, but we know that it's hard to find leased land as well. So uh, that's another area we're looking into to help uh, identify those, those opportunities. But the biggest one is social media. I don't think people, even in the business world, have realized the power of social media to get your message out. And we encourage every single aspiring farmer to create a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram page, even Snapchat, and talk about the journey of becoming a farmer. You need to let people know that you are going to be a farmer. And from that, doors will open, opportunities will hap- will uh, present themselves retiring farmers will find out um, but unless you're telling people no one's going to find out and doors aren't going to open and social media is right there everyone is on their phone every single second you guys would rather be on your phone right now than watching this uh, and that is where you need to be online creating content talking about your journey talking about people learning as becoming a farmer and use that to build an audience you don't need you only need a couple hundred people you don't need to get thousands and use that to get them to find farms and, and back you on your journey so we think that's really powerful. And now, uh, so now you're farm ready, you've got the hope, you're farm ready, now it's matchmaking. Um, so our job is to find you farms. So we're gonna go out there and find farm opportunities for you. Um, but it'll be similar to an employment opportunity where you'll be up on uh, for selection with a number of others. So we're finding the best way uh, for you to get on your farm is actually bring farms to us, pitch farms, talk to retiring farmers, get up there, get out there, drive down driveways, talk to people you know who know retiring farmers, figure out how to get a conversation going. I mean, get it, it can be awkward, but how much do you want this farm? Figure out how you can get in touch with these retiring farmers who you can have a chat to about getting onto their farm. Um, Particularly farmers who don't have their own kids to hand on to, um, you should have a big database of these people that you are constantly trying to figure out how to contact and have a chat to them about uh, getting onto their farm. So if you bring us those farms and you pitch it, so put together a a 10 or 20 page document and we've got a template, uh, we'll take that to investors and we'll help you figure out how to get onto that farm. So we think that is an awesome opportunity and we want more people to take this on, treat it like being a farm entrepreneur, constantly out there pulling together deals and trying to find a way to get onto your farm. Be realistic as well. This could take 20 pitches or 100 farm pitches. It could take five years, 10 years still to get there. But we're confident if you're dedicated enough, you can actually make this happen. But again, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, You should know the landscape. You should know 
we've had people say, oh, I found out someone was selling their farm the other day and I couldn't believe it. Uh, if I, only I knew. You should know two years in advance of when anybody is going to be selling their farm. You should know that who's moving, who isn't, who's never going to move, who's never going to sell, uh, who is, who has kids, who doesn't. You should understand within a 100k radius all the farms in your district so you are onto it straight away uh, and for figuring out ways to get yourself onto one of those farms. You should treat yourself like a real estate agent really uh, and be on top of it all. Um, you should, talking about real estate agents, you should be friends with real estate agents, you should be friends with accountants, lawyers, people who are deal with retiring farmers every single, retirement age farmers every single day and let them know you're gonna be a farmer uh, and they could present opportunities to you. You never know what's gonna happen out of that. Agronomists, uh, funeral directors, I know it's terrible, but they're always coming, uh, people are coming to them uh, looking for solutions um, when someone tragically dies or they're planning for, for their uh, funeral as well. Uh, vets, so all these people who are in constant contact with farmers, you need to know and let them know you're gonna be a farmer and they can help open doors for you. Um, and once you've already built your social media profile, you can, again, as I said before, you can use that to find opportunities as well. Let, opportunities. So um, let them know that you want to be a farmer and you need a farm uh, and they can be eyes and ears for you as well. You can go to the media, put an article out saying you want to be on a, a farm and you're putting a call out to retiring farmers. That's really powerful. Get in a newspaper, local newspaper. How, how great a story would that be? Um, and then also, yeah, work with us, get in contact with us and let's um, talk about how uh, we can sort out your part farm pathway and get you onto your farm. So, so that's it, it's a bit of a whirlwind, uh, but there are many, many ways to get you on your farm. Really, this is about what your mindset is. Do you actually wanna be a farmer? Is it a real goal of yours? If it is, we're here to help. There are plenty of ways to get you onto it. Do not let investment be your barrier anymore. There's plenty of ways of finding ways to, uh, to get you onto your farm and get you that money. Um, so happy to help, happy to chat, and happy to keep the discussion going around this. Um, we'd love to chat at other events. Um, and uh, yeah, please reach out. Sam at cultivatefarms.com is my email. Check our website at cultivatefarms.com. Watch our Facebook. We do weekly updates. Um, and yeah, I hope that was really useful. Hope it gets the discussion going. Really keen to hear what your feedback is. Uh, and uh, enjoy the night. Cheers. Cheers.